Yo, what's up everybody? It's your man, Tim Swain. Hey, listen, I know it's 2021. Some of y'all have resolutions. I'm no longer eating pork, beef, chicken. I'm going straight vegan. And you ask me, are there any good vegan restaurants in Ghana? Well, the answer is yes. So today I'm sitting down with Mahogany owner as we talk about ingredients made from nature with love. And I'm gonna try some of this lemon ginger juice right now. <coughs> That's some real ginger. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today. I know you're extremely busy. So for folks uh, that may not know you, please tell us your name. Um, my name is Doris. I'm Doris Fagun Ajogenu, originally from Benin. Um, I'm married to a Ghanaian and I'm living in Ghana. And, and you're the, the owner of this wonderful restaurant, uh, Mahogany. Mahogany. And you were just telling me the, the play on words of, of, uh, of, of why the name Mahogany, right? Yeah. Then um, <clears throat> the play was on, on the tree because obviously we're looking at plants, then we thought of the tree, Mahogany, and we wanted to bring in the word organic. And that's how we have an air R added to the word, then it's Mahogany. And, uh, the full name is Mahogany Hair Foods. Oh, okay. That's how the company is registered in Ghana. But we use a short name, Mahogany. And uh, yeah. Wow. So as I said, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today. I found your place because I frequently go to ANC Mall and I was researching like um, uh, vegan places in Ghana and then this place popped up. So I took my son to the mall. I saw some kebabs. And so I said, I said, is this a chicken kebab or whatever? They said, no, it's tofu. So I took it, I tasted it, and the taste was, it was very, very good. And so actually I started going back there. I started buying more products from their place. And I said, you know what? I have to sit down with the owner of this place so I can share this secret, you know, to folks who don't know it. So thank you once again for sitting down and talking with me. And I want to back up in the story. Let's talk about... How did you come up with the idea for this particular uh, business here in Ghana? Um, the idea came about um, trying to figure out what to do with my time. I was a mom, I was a housewife, taking care of two kids at that moment. And um, like I said, I'm originally from Benin, and I was trying to fit into the Ghanaian society, right? And um, and I wanted to do something I love because obviously, yeah, I'm a trained diplomat from Benin, um, a master in human resource and all of that. But I still wasn't feeling, you know, compelled or there was no traction to do any of that. Mm. I was trying to figure out something that I could do that would have an impact on people's life. And I started thinking, why don't I look at what I eat? I'm a vegan myself. Uh, my spouse is vegan, and we've been adopting that diet for a long time. But we live in a choir whereby there was no space where we could go and feel confident that whatever we're eating was not harming us health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a few options, but there was nothing whereby I go and I'm totally confident that there's nothing added to my plate. Mm. And the idea started popping from there, whereby we thought, okay, why don't we create that space where someone who doesn't want to have anything to do with, 
you know, meat or animal byproducts can come into that space and just have anything you feel, you know. We travel a lot. Mm. We did travel a lot. Then we, we kind of exposed to the culture and all of that. And we just felt like, why do we go to other country and we can, you know, we can find vegan restaurants, we can eat easily. And when we come back home, we cannot do that. We cannot take our kids out. Then Mahogany came from that idea. Okay, because I was going to ask for someone who is watching this, and people yeah. literally watch from yeah. all over the world. They may be hearing vegan, and they think vegan and vegetarian are the same thing. So for people who are watching this, explain what what is vegan? How is it different from being vegetarian? Yeah. Okay, when you say vegan, I guess even today, there's so much more meaning to it that yeah. I can even, I cannot even go to those standards because when you talk about vegan today, it's a whole lifestyle. Okay, yeah. But what we mean is that everything in your plate is going to be completely plant-based. There's nothing. That means it's completely kind of, it's coming from plants. So no... Uh milk from a cow or no, a goat? No milk from a cow, not from a goat. Um, no eggs? No eggs, no what a, fish. So what about the shito when they uh, put we the small We actually make our shito, we make a great vegan shito. Hey, then cannot, I have to try it. The vegan shito is delicious and we don't have any fish to it. I'll try it, I'll have to try it. Because what we have, we also have other options. We have mushroom. Mm. Oh, some mushroom dry and brown will give you that same taste and then you have your tofu chunks my goodness when you add oh, them to your sheet then you have those textures that you are looking for wow. then when we're talking about vegan we're just saying that everything you have in in your plate has to be made with plants when you talk about vegetarian you can still sneak in some fish here, you can sneak in some egg there, you know, and we can go on and on yeah, when so you're many. going on the vegetarian diet. But when you're going on a vegan, you are taking out all of those elements. I, I was telling you earlier that I had this situation happen when I was in the States where I was not really cognizant of my diet yeah. because I'm not a, a large person, so I thought that if you don't look big, then you're healthy. Yeah. But it wasn't until my church had like, uh, they were doing a fast at my church where it basically was like a, a vegan diet. And I remember going on that fast. And at this time I was about a hundred and probably like 70 pounds. And I started going through withdrawals because of all of the sugar that was in all of the food that I was eating. And I didn't know that it was there. I was not conscious to it. But what happened was I didn't know like the real impact of how what we put in our bodies affects our minds, our, like it affects all of us. Long story short, I told my wife, I said, listen, let's throw all of this out the cabinet. Let's start reading labels. I lost about 30 pounds. I never got back up to that weight again, but that was the transformation for me that said, okay, I need to be, for me it was, I need to be a better steward of a, the one body that God has given me. I'm not a vegan, but I started becoming more conscious about what I was eating. And and so that's my story, but but for folks, um, you said you have uh, been a vegan for about 10 years. So what was that process like for you and how did you decide that, okay, I want to become a vegan? I usually get that question a lot. And um, when I moved to Ghana, it was in 2004, I was just a young student who just finished uh, her first degree and I was just coming in an adventure in Accra. And I met this gentleman back in Benin and we were going to take our relationship to a next level. I just didn't know he was vegan then. Mm -hmm. And then when we step out, when we go out together, I'll have, you know, my meat and fish and the guy, he wasn't going to eat. Guys, my husband today we've been married for almost 15 years. Yeah. And um and one day I asked him, but you don't ever have meat or fish. Is that no? It's not necessary. Mm. I like, hmm, wow, you know, that's not interesting. And um 
remind me, he's a surgeon himself, he's a neurosurgeon, and he knows what he was talking about. I'm like, but how would you have that whole plate and there's no fish? Yeah. I wasn't too big a meat eater, but I'll have fish and I'll also have some eggs sometimes. You know, that, that was pretty much my diet. And uh, he told me, there's nothing to miss. You can try. And I decided to give it a try to tofu. And because I moved into a country where I didn't really know where to go, when I was cooking on my own, I wasn't adding meat and fish because my dad is vet. Back home, he selected the meat and fish and everything mm -hmm. to bring it home. And I was in an environment where by I was far from home, I didn't I didn't have control of what was on the market. I didn't really know those stuff. Then I decided, okay, why not not eat? And then try what was, you know, tofu and all of that. And then I started experimenting. And honestly, I was eating all my local food, ademe, we are playing, which is typically <laughs> from Benin. Um, I'll eat my oko and uh, love. Yeah. Okay, we call it another name back there, but it's still the same. I was <laughs> watching, but I was enjoying all of that with no meat mm. at the beginning because I wasn't too experimented with the tofu. And then there was a restaurant in those days who was making all this tofu. Then I started buying wow. it from it. And then I love it. Wow. And I'm a sickle cell, not uh sickling into the worst sense but mm. i have traits mm. for my mom mm. and um i go through period where i'm in serious pain my joints hurt um i can hardly walk and even sometimes when we are in the hot season like right now it's yeah. hot, i'll be wearing a sweater because i'm chills wow wow six months down to not eating any more meat, no more of all of that. Symptoms just slowly. Wow. I wasn't feeling after a year. I've I've never believed I could even leave or spend time in a cold country like going to Europe in winter. That was completely something I would never thought because I know what that would do to my body. Mm -hmm. But I live in South Africa for so long for the past two years, I didn't have any problem because I became vegan. I noticed a lot of changes to my body. Pain, it didn't, I wasn't going through those pain that I will randomly feel anymore. And, and then when I do, I know exactly why. Mm. I'm probably having too much sugar this week. Wow. Then, I just started listening a bit more to my body. I listened to what I feel and then I tried to figure out what in my diet is not working. And then I always find it. So let, let's talk about mahogany restaurant. If I come to this restaurant for the first time, what are some of the varieties of foods uh, that you offer on the menu? Okay, mahogany actually when you walk in, there's a whole variety of food you can. From finger foods, we'll say you can get our famous kebabs, tofu, and quits. The tofu, we always use it for people who, yeah, you want kind of a fishy kind of taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can meet you there. And then the quit is usually to give the meaty, mm -hmm. chewy kind of texture. It's for them. Then you get the kebab and you get our pies. Um, our pies are delicious. No meat in them, but they're full of hmm, some nice stuff that people who are not vegan walking here every day just to get a pie. Pies, uh, spring rolls, you know, those, you know, those yes. finger food things that you don't necessarily need to have a whole plate in front of. You. Yes. And then you have our drinks. When we wanted to create our line of products, even though we were looking at making everything that was, we needed to do something that was more specific. 
and we wanted to look into our indigenous foods. And that's how we started making baobab tree. Mm. Baobab, because we don't just realize, people always say, oh, when you need vitamin C, you need orange. You need baobab, that's mm. what you need. Mm. It's full of, it's full of vitamin C. You can have ginger and then you can, from there you can just play with it, you know, the flavors and all of that. And then we have, but bisap, okay, sobolo called in Ghana. Yes, yes. Obviously that is all over the place. And yeah. there's no way Mahogany was not going to make its own version of sobolo. Uh, we have bisap on the menu. We have sugar cane, actually, you know, for the, People who like sugar, it's pure sugar cane squeezed freshly in bottle for our clients. Wow. Anytime we have a whole range of um, vegan ice cream, amazing! Oh, I have to try. Some. Yeah, the ice cream we have this uh, company in Ghana mm. which we making for about three years They're called Blue Sky. Yes. We're making with coconut. Yes, amazing stuff. But we have another sister. Hmm. She make ice cream on baobab. Really? Oh my goodness. When I met her a few years ago, I told her she needs to gather it's, it's like like wow. like this way. Because they are delicious. And they're completely vegan. You have some here. Yeah. I'll, I'll try do. I'll try it on camera. Yeah. Once we finish yes, it, I'll try absolutely. it. Yes, absolutely. We'll let you Because I've them. tried the blue skies. Yeah, you tried the blue sky. But you I need have, to, try to try the, the Baobao Bao ice cream. They're a treat. And obviously we can go on. We do everything from your ice dishes to we pay a lot of with ponyo. I don't know if you know about ponyo. Ponyo is a local grain. Okay. Uh, gluten free, grown in the north of Ghana. Really? And actually grown in the north of most of the West African countries because where I come from, Benin, we also eat ponyo. Mm. And it's a grain that's very light, but you can do anything. You can make ponyo jollof. We can make ponyo stir fry. It's a grain and it's completely gluten free and it's a delicious. We can make banku in ponyo. It's wow. so versatile that recently Mahogany Apetico especially has been using it. You know, we do banku with uh, ponyo banku, we all post you, we do the jollof and people love it. And Ghanaian love it. Wow. Yeah, you know, there, there, you, you've shared so much great information around our bodies, our health, and even giving us information and insight to why you decided to turn your, your passion into a business. And so the last thing I'll ask you is, what encouragement would you have for someone watching right now that maybe was in that position that you were in where you were eating this and that and maybe had some health concerns and you didn't really know the impact of what we eat on our whole wellness? What advice would you give someone that maybe wants to go vegan or vegetarian? How should they start? Where should they start? I always say, you always have to take a first step. And the first step is always becoming conscious of what your body means to you. I always hear these comments. We all end up dying anyway, <laughs> you know. So I might as well yeah, enjoy life. Yeah, I might as well enjoy life. But what I say to that is, I want to enjoy life, but I want to enjoy it being healthy. I don't want to be a burden to my kids mm. or my family mm. just because I make some wrong choices. Okay. Then I'll say, once you realize that, okay, this body is a temple. I don't want to go into the Christian beliefs and yep. all of that, but even if you are knowing a Christian belief, it's a temple. It yep. was given to us and we just have to take care of it. Yeah. And you have to understand that whatever goes in, it was makes you. And like you were saying, spiritual level, mind, everything has to do with what we eat. What was the first step? The first step is what am I eating at the moment? Once you know what you are eating, is starting to take away one thing at a time. 
it's a journey it's not something you achieve just in a week two months three months and once you're on it you can see how your body reacts to it you just see how you know your skin becomes you know clearer the pimples goes away you, and then it's so easy for you to stick to what you are doing because once you see results even when you are tempted to go back and then you love your body and you see how you are looking and you start getting compliments hey. oh <laughs> you're looking so what are you doing you know then hey. you know you're on the right path yeah 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 wow. you know and you're on the right path well, well thank you so much i know there's so many people watching that will get a lot of great information be extremely motivated so once again thank you so much um, and thank you so much for tuning in to another episode we sincerely appreciate it make sure you subscribe Make sure you like this video. Until next time, peace.